Hey everybody, this is D Hunter for another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarland DC Multiverse New 52 Cyborg Superman. Now, personally, I want the Cyborg Superman from Death and Return of Superman, but in the meantime, this will do. I pre this guy at the McFarland Toy Store, and he arrived today. There is also a Platinum Chase variant to this guy, who's more of the Rebirth design. So let's take a look. Now, as you can see, the top 22 moving parts, McFarland Toys, ages 12 plus. DC Multiverse Cyborg Superman. Here he is in the package, one giant robot hand. Kind of wish he had a regular hand for an alternative, but it's all good. Cyborg Superman, New 52. Other side, Cyborg Superman. At the bottom, there's his barcode if that helps. And at the back, here he is posed up from the comics. So with no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He doesn't come with any traditional accessories, simply a flight stand and a collector's card. Before we take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the figure. So this is Cyborg Superman, specifically for the New 52. Personally, I'm familiar with the Cyborg Superman from Death and Return of Superman, but this is a completely different character. Apparently this version is Superman's uncle, Zor-El, who escaped Krypton's destruction with the help of Brainiac, the Collector of Worlds. He was subjected to cybernetic augmentations that deranged his personality, and his uncle became this version of Cyborg Superman, which is a Superman villain. He has tried to take over the world, tried to kill Superman and Supergirl, etc. So let's take a look at him. Starting with this face here, you can see it looks really good. He's got red eyes, he's got flesh on the top part of his head, and then his chin and jaw are metallic and exposed. Kind of has a Terminator vibe to it. Let's go further down, got the Superman logo. The metallic is exposed all over his body. He's got this giant cybernetic arm, claw-like hands. He's got spikes on here, it's the same color as his suit. So you can see the traditional blue, red, a little bit of yellow, but a lot of robo parts as well. It looks like maybe a single jointed elbow on that arm, and double jointed on that one, double jointed knees. His cape is tattered up, looks pretty good. I'm not sure if that's a suit. I mean, I guess it has to be on top of the robot body. But it's a cool, interesting, villainous Superman. Now, there is a Platinum Chase variant of this, and I believe that's supposed to be based off his look in the Rebirth comics. Now, the original Cyborg Superman was Hank Henshaw, and I believe the Rebirth one as well. But the New 52 one in front of you is a different guy. Superman's uncle turned evil. I don't know. It's all very confusing. If anyone could set the record straight, Am I correct that Henry is the pre-New 52 and post-New 52 Cyborg Superman, and then Superman's uncle is the New 52 version? That's what the collector's card leads me to believe. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt, which I think looks fantastic. It has the right hair for Superman, the facial features for Superman, and then sort of mixed with a T-800 at the bottom. The epitome of what I would think about when I hear Cyborg Superman. A closer look at the blue paint job. Look at his legs, it's not all one solid color. Looks like it has a little bit of like a black wash on top. Nice job there. Subtle, but they could have easily just made it all one solid blue. Now let's check out his accessories. Starting off with the display stand. It comes in two separate pieces. When put together, it's going to look like this. At the bottom, we have a typical display stand. And it says DC, it's got a peg for the pegels on his feet. And there's a post coming up to the top. Top is hinged can rotate and it has this clamp to hold your figure. Here's an example of the flight stand action holding Superman in midair and if wanted to you could remove the post and use it as a regular type of display stand. Somebody has suggested to me that if you don't like his arm with the giant hand you could replace it with the page puncher Adam's hand. Do the whole arm out, popped it in here and of course it would need a repaint but it's an option if it bothers you a lot. Now that we're taking a pretty good look at the figure and his lack of accessories, let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing about 7.5 inches tall, which can translate to around 19 centimeters. And for its articulation, starting with his head, of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down a pretty good amount. Can't tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint, goes about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have that butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest. Increase the range of motion 
and covering the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut. Looks like a single jointed elbow on this arm and double jointed on that arm. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged. Torso, he's got a ball joint. Rotate around, forward and back. Another one in his waist. Rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, pretty good range of motion. I seem to get a little more of the waist than the torso on this guy. Legs complete as splits. McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is pretty much non existent. They go forward about that far. Back not much. Out that much. Double jointed knees. And his ankle. Forward and back. Rotate. Tilt. Rock. And of course, torn articulation. Here's a close up look at the Cyborg Superman. Here he is hovering above the skies of Metropolis. And then here's the team of Superman replacements from the reign of Superman. Steel, Eradicator, Cyborg Superman, and Superboy. Now let's check them out. Nice to see some other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Now I would love to start off by comparing this guy to the Platinum Chase variant of Cyborg Superman, but I don't have him yet. I'm on the hunt for that guy. If anybody has a lead on where I may be able to get one, please drop me a line in the comments below. It's much appreciated. Here's Cyborg Superman next to the rest of the Supermen from Reign of the Supermen. We have Connell Superboy, Cyborg Superman, The Eradicator, and Steel. Now, none of these are the versions from Reign of Superman. They're all from the New 52 with the Rebirth. Superboy doesn't look that different. He's got the spikes on him, doesn't have glasses, hair a little bit different. They could easily use that base body and make us a Superboy from that version. Cyborg Superman is considerably different. They probably have to use a Superman figure, give him a different head to make the original Cyborg Superman. Eradicator literally just needs a repaint. They don't really have to do any new parts. Steel kind of looks good as he is for that version. They could repaint him a little bit. I would be shocked if they don't eventually do a Reign of the Superman box set of four or possibly five figures with Superman. Not a lot of new tooling would be required. They could charge pretty high price on that thing, and you know it would sell out like crazy. Now, originally, they all started off as were good guys replacing Superman, but it didn't take very long for Cyborg Superman to become a villain. But the original Superboy, Eradicator of Steel were all heroes. But these particular versions, Superboy's a good guy, Cyber Superman and Eradicator are both villains, and Steel is also a hero. And probably the best Superman figure to go alongside these guys, if you're going for the Reign of Superman look, would be this Death and Return of Superman, Swole Superman from the Collector's Edition. And here he is, next to the Death and Return of Superman figures. Here are all the different Superman rogues that McFarland has made. There was once upon a time where we just had one or two, and we didn't have the main ones. I would say Superman's main rogues are Darkseid, General Zod, and Lex Luthor. And there is a more traditional Darkseid that's starting to be released, and I'll have mine, I'm sure, in the near future. The General Zod and Lex Luthor are pretty normal versions, so I appreciate that. In front of you, from the top, left to right, we have Bizarro, Brainiac, Ultraman, General Zod, Lex Luthor, Metallo, Atomic Skull, and then Eradicator, Kalibak, Darkseid, Cyborg Superman, Doomsday, Mongol, and Superboy Prime. Now they've covered the main ones. What are the main Superman villains we're missing? Well, I mean, maybe a better version of Metallo. Parasite. Toy Man. I mean, if those are our main missing Superman rogues, they've done a pretty good job covering the basics at this point. Here's Cyborg Superman, next to several different McFarland Cyborg figures. Cyborg Superman is a pretty tall McFarland figure, clocking it at 7.5 inches tall. When you think of large McFarland figures, you think of the Hush Batman. That guy is 7.4 inches tall. He is taller than the Hush Batman, but not nearly as tall as the Page Puncher Superman. Now let's check him out, next to some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to the second digital wave. Superman, Green Arrow, and the Atom. And here he is, next to the Tart exclusive Jim Gordon in the Rookie Suit versus Mr. Bloom 2-pack, then next to the Target exclusive Fire and Metallo, and now next to the DC Rebirth Tim Drake Robin, and here he is next to the Joker and Punchline 2-pack, then next to the Nightfall Batman versus Bane 2-pack, and now 
Next to the Dark Knight Trilogy, Morgan Freeman, Lucius Fox. Here's Cyborg Superman. Next to the Amazon exclusive, Glow in the Dark, Batman Joker Robot. And the GameStop exclusive, Frostbite Joker. And here he is, next to the Glow in the Dark, Kryptonite Doomsday. Then, next to the Mr. Freeze, Ambush Bug, and Booster Gold Wave. Now let's check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies. So we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise. In case you'll know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarlane toy, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect. They work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarlane toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines. All from McFarlane toys. All 7-inch scale. And now, next to some Jack-specific wrestling figures. And some Diamond Slick toys. Here he is, next to a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. And here he is, next to some DC Direct and NECA figures. Then with both some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures. And now, with some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mapex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, next to some SH figure arts and some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, this is a pretty cool Cyborg Superman figure. Not the version that I particularly wanted, but still makes for a badass figure. I do expect them to eventually make the Reign of Superman version, but this also looks really cool. His head sculpt is fantastic. You can totally see Superman and the hair and the brow and the eyes, but he's angry. Red eyes, lines on his face, and then the bottom half is missing the skin, and it looks like the T-800 from the Terminator franchise. And that's honestly what the original Cyborg Superman looked like, too. He had half his skin missing. Just makes for a really cool look. And this guy looks very sinister and evil. Not really sure about the spikes on his arm leading down to the giant claw-like hand. But it's cool, it's menacing. Head is top-notch. His accessories are non-existent. Sculpt and paint job, better than good. His articulation is everything you'd expect from a modern McFarlane DC Multiverse figure. If I were to rate this guy, and I'm surprised to say this, I'm going to give him a 7.5. Figure's fun, he looks good, and I'm enjoying him more than I expected. I actually thought he looked pretty dumb in the promo pictures, and I was like, eh, it's not the version I want. His hand looks stupid. But in hand, he's a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying him. But this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.